Hi everyone, welcome to the Knowles Baptist Church. Thank you for joining us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for just being our God and for taking care of us. I just pray right now that as we dive into your word, you will reveal who you are to us and help us to be understanding you more. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Jesus, 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 there's a something about that name, Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain, Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away, but there's something about that name. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for your love and for your mercy. And we just ask you to please guide our steps in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, thanks for joining us here. We are at the Knowles Baptist Church. We You can find us on TikTok, uh, X, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. Our URL is https colon backslash backslash the Knowles, K-N-O-L-L-S, Baptist Church dot my, M-Y dot Canva, C-A-N-V-A dot site backslash kbc you go there you'll see what we believe in and you'll see a little scroll down you'll see a ask request for prayer if you can support us with some money would be fantastic and we get some extra uh, goodies in terms of some sermons and some sermon links so you might enjoy the website what we're doing tonight is we're talking about something that's not a great topic to talk about but it's something we have to discuss there's always an answer to our our problems and the one problem we got in our world is godlessness. We're going to talk about godlessness today. We're also going to talk about the solution as well. As we look at 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. It says this, verse 1. But understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty. For people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient, to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen, and conceit with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness but denying the power, avoid such people, for among them are those who creep into households and capture weak women, burdened with sins and led away by various passions, always learning and never able to arrive at a knowledge of the truth. Godlessness. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you again for what you have to offer us, your love and for your mercy. We just pray that we will really grab a hold of that. This world is just a, just so much gar garbage in it. We just need we need to be aware of it. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Aware of it, I prayed. Well, if you're not aware of it, I don't know where you're at. But here's the thing. What's interesting about this passage, this is written 2,000 years ago. And talking about what will happen eventually. If you look into our own world history, as I'm reading this, I'm thinking of when uh, the uh, explorers came across the Atlantic and how they sometimes did some bad stuff with the natives. They sometimes brought diseases. Not, it wasn't necessarily deliberate. It wasn't, you know, here's what happened. I, I want to say it's called the Colombian Exchange. That was a trade route that came around the 1700s, 1600s, 1500, something like that. Anyway, it was when they bought goods and services from Europe to the Americans, and they bought different things like plants and other things. But the problem was, these plants were from a different continent, and therefore their exposure to different viruses weren't the same kind of viruses that were over here. So they brought some of that with them 
not meaning to, and as a result, people got sick. Well, and then there were those who did the liberal. But you think about just how the different types of world, the world powers were dominating. We weren't even a country when these explorers were going. And Great Britain was the king of the world in terms of the most powerful nation. Then they uh, had a fight with us called the Revolutionary War, and we won, and we began to grow as a nation. World War II made us a, a big superpower. But the point is this, is that throughout those times, there have been difficulties. Uh, I'm thinking of when it says right here about this, the godliest part, about um, um, for among them are those who creep into households and capture weak women, burdened with sins and led astray by various passions, always learning and, and never able to arrive at the knowledge of the truth. And talks about uh, uh, having the appearance of godliness but denying the power. There was a story of one gangster falling in love with a, having a relationship with a, Ra, a singer who was a minister's daughter. Um, there's a lot of stuff that went on in the olden days. And also, you'd see uh, pictures of mafia people would walk into their uh, churches, and uh, the Catholic Church, a lot of them were from Italy, so they'd come in to go to the Catholic Church, and they would kiss the ring of the priest, and they'd walk in and do their thing, and then they would go and kill people. They put on godliness. We're going to mass. We're going to church. We're looking like we're religious. I remember a um, guy that I came to visit one time. I was going to this church, a Baptist church, and I just stopped by and say hello. And he looks at me and goes, do I owe you any money? I go, no. I just came by and say hi. <laughs> that was it. But he couldn't believe it. Then another guy, same guy, they came by my apartment, and he saw all the Bible stuff I had. And he started to have tears in his eyes. I wasn't sure if the guy was being truthful or not, because he was looking pretty good at schmoozing, you know? I mean, you just don't know if these people are real. They put on a nice little front of being religious. They go to church, they got that uh, suit on, they carry their uh, big Bible, they walk in, da 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 But God knows their hearts. And there are enough people out there that kind of mess up the system. Godlessness, all these things. Look at the godlessness talking about. I mean, what do you mean? Just you name it. Lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving. Oh, they just want after it. Just rotten people. And these people have been in existence throughout history. So when God says this, he says, it says, but understand this, in the last days there will be times of difficulty. There will be all kinds of people like this. And we are. It, it does seem to be getting worse. It seems like the boundaries are being pushed. What used to be wrong 50 years ago is now considered normal, and now there's new stuff that's wrong. That they're being, they're trying to push and push and push and push. We can, we can talk about it. Marriage. It used to be you made, you committed a vow, you stayed married. That used to be the case. Now, I'm not going to tell you that marriages were all happy, though. But they still stayed married because that was the way you were supposed to do it. If you decide to get married, you stay married. That's flip a coin nowadays. And nowadays, it's like, oh, they're living together? Okay, no big deal. Or there's even issues about whether a person, man and man, woman and woman. That was never, that was not even talked about 50 years. We have gone to the point where now we're just accepting things that just weren't even thought of. Now, God has an answer for all. It's amazing, too. If you look what he says right here, he says, you get all this godlessness. He said, just as is at verse number nine, is it? Or is it verse number uh, eight? Just as Jane, just as Janus and Jaffrey opposed Moses, so those men also opposed the truth, men corrupted in mind and disqualified regarding the faith, that they will not go very far, get very far. Their folly will be plain to all. As what as that was those two men. All scripture, how about this? 
You, however, have followed my teaching, my conduct, my aim in life, my faith. Ah, okay. We're following what Paul says. Patience, my love, my steadfastness, my persecutions and sufferings happened to me. And Antioch, and Iconium, and Lystra, which persecution I endured yet from them all, that Lord rescued me. And indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus, Jesus will be persecuted, while evil people and impostors will go on from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue to in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings which we are able to make wise for salvation through faith in Christ. All scripture is breathed out by God and professed profitable for, for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. There's our answer. The scriptures, our faith, our belief in God, that is the answer. The godlessness, the, look at what he says again, the godlessness. says, self-lovers himself, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient, ungrateful, unholy. And then he turns around and says, but as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing with whom you learned it. And how that from childhood have been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. You have the answer. You can walk away from the godlessness because you have the answer. And he talks about the persecution. Now, this is something that's important. Because we live in America. Those of us who live in, well, I should say, this probably is being viewed mostly by people living in America, though there may be other English-speaking people that watch too. But we're, we're in America, we got a whole lot, we got pretty good freedoms this way. You have Christians going to work every day. You have people, like, on, we, uh, on Sunday, people will go to church, you can go to church on Sunday, and there's, you know, unfortunately, there are some tragedies where people have been harmed in church, but but most of the time, you can go to church, worship God, pray, sing, study the word, and have events, and have social times, and in the right way, share the gospel. So we do have that ability. We have that freedom. At the same time, if I go to work holding my Bible, if anybody goes to work, if anybody goes to work holding their Bible and say, Jesus saves, there's a very good chance that you will not work in that place anymore. <laughs> Oddly enough, if you talk about any other group, you may not be. You might be applauded for being a bold individual. I, I, I don't have any firm facts on that, but I would say I could think of other belief systems that if a person set up, I am proud in my belief system, people will go, hey man, that's great, glad. But if we say Jesus saves, I think there's going to be a little more of a resistance. And why is that? Because it's God's word. Friends, the Holy Spirit, it says here, all scripture is inspired. Look, look what he says right here. It says, um, was right. Oh, it was it all. All scripture. This is verse number sixteen of uh, chapter three, Second Timothy three sixteen. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. All scripture is breathed 
by oh my god so it's not just everyday writing my dad who i thought was fantastic had some shortcomings and one of them was he was agnostic at least part of his life i think there's a part of his life he turned to christ at one time either in a very early age or a very late age so i believe he's in heaven but he had a long career of being agnostic for just a lot of different reasons and he said i write this down it's inspired and i felt bad because no dad i love you but you're wrong but you see that's what people don't understand all scripture is inspired now look what, he, look what it says right here let's read what it says again it says uh where are we at here no um all scripture is breathed out by god and profitable for teaching for reproof for correction and for training in righteousness. In other words, it's not just reading. It is God's work. It is powerful. It, impa it impacts you. It affects you. You read it, and it's going to have an impact on you. It does, because it's God-breathed. And that is why, and I don't mean, this may sound like a joke. It, it's sort of humorous, but it's not. You quote scripture in a break room, watch everybody get up and need to go to the bathroom real quick. <laughs> I'm not trying to be funny, it's, it, but it's amazing. I have seen it happen. You know, in John 16, it says this. Oh, yeah, oh I got to get back. Get, they run, because it's, and the reason is this. There is a, there is a power. The Holy Spirit power is in the Word of God. So it does affect people. And if you and I are in the word, it's going to have an impact on you and me. It affects people because it is God's word. It's inspired by God. And now watch what he says right here. It says, all scripture is breathed out by God. All scripture is breathed out by God. He spoke it. Just like the Lord spoke the universe with a breath. And the world was created. That's the almighty power of our God. He was, he breathed it out. And then it was, he said right here, he says, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training. Teaching, reproof, correction, and training. It does all that. The word of God does that. And so, we get our answers to life's questions from Scripture. And so when you look at the other side, where it talks about um, where people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient, to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, Slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen, with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of God. All that stuff, the word of God can cut through and just cause, just, it's almost like God can spew it out because it's so contrary to his truth he just slices and dice when people are turned to him he cleanses them and he flushes that garbage out of the way now are we still going to struggle with it yes we will because we got flesh still but he has got us going in the right direction and as he we read the bible and we're praying and we're studying his word he is inch by inch by inch taking that garbage out. God's word is the answer to all this stuff. Godlessness is answered by godliness. 
Godlessness is answered by God's word, God's truth. All scripture is written by the Lord. And here he goes here, he says, if you look up here, he says, indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted while evil people and imposters will go on from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. In other words, if you are openly de declaring your faith, you will have some problems. I don't think we're going to have the same problems here as we would in other parts of the world. But, like I said, you don't go around the office saying, Jesus saved, you must be born. I know this happened. Because I had it happen to me. I went to work for a guy at a department store. And my church gave me tracks. Oh, I don't, never do this. I did it. The man hired me. It was nice. I got to work for the guy. But I handed people the tracks. They were gospel tracks. I didn't know it was supposed to be gospel tracks. The word, the word, the word got back to the boss. And the next thing you know, well, how shall I say this? I didn't have a job. Now, in all honesty, I kind of made a mistake. I didn't look closely at the pamphlets. Some were gospel tracts, but some were directions for the gospel tracts. <laughs> but the point is, I was handing the people, not the customers, the people that I worked with. No way. That was the end of me. Now, do I want to say that I was persecuted? I can use that excuse, but the fact is I was just dumb. I mean, if you approach it that way, you will get you will lose everything. Now, the only way you won't is if you own the place. I say that because I applied for a driver position once. Driving stuff around the area. I go in for the interview, and friend, it blew me away. The guy was sitting there, he had his Bible open. And he went ahead and said to me, I want to give you the gospel. I'm like, what? He presented the gospel to me in the interview. That was the interview. Now, I don't know how long the company lasts, but that's the one way you can get away with it because you're the owner. And then there was another time I was working at a company where the guy who was my supervisor, he called me into the closet, his closet, and said, I want to show you this. He started sharing the gospel too with me. He's my supervisor. Now that can happen, but at the same time, he had probably got enough security so that what are they going to do? Get rid of him? Probably not. But I'm trying, what I'm trying to say to you is this. You are taking a chance when you preach the gospel at work. You are taking a chance when you preach the gospel in social situations. You're taking a chance of people saying, let's get away from that. So that, you could say, is the kind of persecution that we deal with. But there are other parts of the world where people are literally thrown in jail for their beliefs in God. If they preach the word, there was a friend of mine who went overseas to another country. I want to say it was Turkey. And he was on a mission to help with businesses. And because of the fact they were against the gospel, he, they, they had a program set up so he would go overseas and talk to people about building a business and they used it as a front. Now, how they did share the gospel, I have no idea. But they used it as a front to share the gospel. Now, they were only over there for a couple months and they did what they did, but it was a way to get the message of the gospel in. But the vast majority of people who are in there, if they're Christians, they can't talk about it. They won't talk about it because they will be either thrown in jail or Worse. So there is persecution in our world, but real, real, heavy duty persecution. And our country, and our country is a lot more, uh, so we're, we have a softer side to us. Because we got like, what, how many, 60 million evangelical Christians in the United States? So we got, we got, a, we got our own little group of Christians in our country. But it doesn't change the fact that we could find ourselves having problems if we do it, we don't do it the right way. But God says very clearly that we need to realize that the answer is the Word of God. All Scripture is inspired. It teaches, it reproves, it corrects, it 
changes lives. And friends, when you've got godlessness, as our world is a godless world, and you've got people who are turned away from God, it is something to know that that godlessness, all those actions of godlessness, have an answer, and the answer is Jesus of Nazareth and his word. Knowing his truth, knowing God's ways, and knowing that we can turn to him for the answers. That is the beauty of the gospel. The godlessness that's out there, it's terrible. But the answer is our Savior, Jesus, and his word. We have an answer. Jesus is the answer. His word is the answer. And I pray that we will always hold on to that fact. That we always have our scriptures. We always have the truth of God's word. We always have. And let's read that again. It says right here. It says, All scripture is breathed out by God, and for profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. All scripture is that way. So, despite the fact we live in a godless world, we have scriptures that offer us the answer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your love, for your mercy, and I just pray right now that we will say yes to Jesus and turn and follow you and turn to the scriptures all the time for the truth and live for you every day. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Friends, the Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. I encourage you right now, friend, if you're not a believer, please say, Jesus, come into my heart, be my Savior. I know I'm a, I'm a sinner. I need you, Jesus. Please come in and be my Savior. If you're a Christian, let's remember, we got the truth of the Word of God. All scripture is the truth. May we turn to it. As we sing the song of the nation, let's decide for Jesus today. Just as I am and waiting not to read my soul of one dark blot to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot, O Lamb of God I come. I come just as I am. Friend, we thank you very much for being a part of our service. We pray that you either made a decision to accept Christ as Savior. If you didn't, please do so soon. Or you decide, you know what? All scripture is my answer. Go into the scriptures and find the truth in the Word of God. That's my answer. May we encourage you to do that. Throw away that godliness. Well, we are the Knowles Baptist Church. You can find us at https colon backslash backslash the Knowles Baptist Church dot my dot canva dot site backslash kbc. We are on TikTok, um, X, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. Many different ways to check us out. Uh, like I said, Mother's Day is coming up in a couple weeks, so you got to do something nice for mom. Surprise her. Bring her some beautiful chocolates. And don't tell her I told her that because she might get mad if she thinks she's going to gain weight. I'm kidding. <laughs> Try and get something nice. Don't get a vacuum cleaner, whatever you do. I know a preacher, a preacher did that one time. Was it Mother's Day or, yeah, it was his birthday. One of the two, he bought that and she's like, huh, what? You get something beautiful, something she can go, oh, I love this. And if you got more kids... The more kids you got, she gets. She's gonna get. She's gonna get fumbled with gifts. It's gonna be fantastic. We pray that's the case. So may you have a happy Mother's Day, friends. May God bless you. Let's pray before we close. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your love and for your mercy. May you guide and direct our every steps. May we live righteously. May we look to your word for your truth, and may we be guided by you every day. It's in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Friends, again, we want to thank you for joining us. Here we are at the Knowles Baptist Church. God bless you. Have yourself a wonderful week. We'll talk to you again soon. God bless.